Gary, thank you very much for joining us. Can you tell me what is the background to you designing this great paddling course here in Sicily? Well, first of all, I think this uh, Sicily is known as one of the beautiful spots of Italy, and obviously they're very concerned uh, about tourism, as every country should be, particularly in these times today. And this is where places like Scotland and Ireland have been so brilliant in that they've you know, had their cash flow continue with all these great golf courses and tourism. So tourism, I suppose, is, was the owners, one of the reasons the owners wanted to do it, besides giving people, local people, uh, jobs, which is important, uh, um, uh, to try and develop maybe a possible young champion, which they're already doing in Italy. So, you know, it's a lot of reasons. And uh, I, it's hard for me to speak on behalf of the owner, but there are a multitude of reasons why he did it. And what has been done here, not the fact that we designed it, but we've designed a very playable, beautiful golf course. It's had a lot of respect for all the old olive trees and the older trees here, the water situation, which I'm very much aware of when designing golf courses. And uh, all in all, it's turned out a great success. And what I do love, you know, when I go to Scotland or Ireland or Britain, I want to enjoy the British tradition. When I go to the Middle East, I want to enjoy their particular, wherever I go, I want to enjoy that particular tradition. And what they've done here, they've maintained the Italian style of architecture, food, and, and, and atmosphere, which I think is terrific. What was the main vision of Prime Minister that you had in mind when you designed this course? Not to make it with crazy undulating greens. I went, uh, they just had a new architect do a, a, a golf course in St. Andrews. We won't mention any names. And I, I want to tell you, I looked at the golf course, it, it looked unplayable to me. The golf course, the greens were just so undulated, so, un and particularly you play at Scotland and you have this breezy day most of the time and you've got to try and play those undulating greens. When these architects do something like that, they, they, they're not good players themselves, most of them, so they really don't understand what the hang's happening. It's quite frightening to see what they do. And so you've got to design a golf course that the average golfer can play. And you continuously, and architects continuously hear that, and yet they decide to make golf courses that are way too tough for the average golfer. The pro golfer is not important to golf. The important person to golf is the heart of the game, is the amateur player, the weekend golfer. Yes, professional golfer does play its role, but these are the people that keep the game going, and they must make golf beautiful, surroundings, enjoyable, fun, where you and your wife and your children can play and have fun and not an absolute nightmare. Where does this rate in all the golf courses you've designed and how well will this rate in Italian golf? Well, first of all, it, it depends on how you want to rate it. If you rate it on a course of difficulty, championship standard, um, it, I wouldn't say it rates in the, in, we've done 300, I wouldn't rate it in the top 20. But as far as playability is concerned, I rate it very high because a very unusual thing about this golf course, almost every one of the golf courses I've done of 300 golf courses, there's always one bad hole. Well, there's always one hole that's not very good. They never had one bad hole out here, which was quite unusual. And it's peaceful here. The ocean, good food, good climate, very, and the people are so uh, courteous and friendly. And when you, you go to a place, you want to go somewhere where people are friendly. You do not want to go where people are arrogant. That's one thing that chases people away. Uh, let's talk, talk about golf in general now. We saw flashes of brilliance from Tiger Woods at the Ryder Cup this year. Is he now becoming the, the player that he once was since his uh, demise 12 months ago? Well, we've got to remember that Tiger Woods has, many ad has had many adversaries, adversity, excuse me, to face up to. I mean, he's had a very tough time. And that takes time to get over that. If you ever do, I don't know. It depends on the individual. But he's also, uh, in my opinion, and I, I say this in my humble opinion, he was being taught a very bad way to play golf the last year or two years. Fanning the club face open, laying the club off, hitting the outside of the ball. He just couldn't hit the ball straight. And it just goes to show that Tiger Woods is actually the most talented man to ever pick up a golf club in the world ever. That he could win golf tournaments basically on his almost his D game. That he could go ahead and win tournaments. When we saw him on his A game at the US Open at Pebble Beach, he won by 15 shots. Now, Techno Tiger Woods is a very smart young man and a very passionate young man. And he will find it 
it's really it's 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 so easy you, I, I could put it right without boasting in one sentence to him and, he, and he'd go and play better than he ever played but when he learns to put the club in the right position at the top again and I didn't have a chance to see him at the Ryder Cup but you could see flashes of brilliance coming through if he, it's all a matter of I, I, my opinion his other problems he'll overcome if but you still got to have certain basic fundamentals in the swing and if he gets his club in the right position at the top of the backswing I predict Tiger Woods will win more tournaments and be better than he ever was. Just going back to the Ryder Cup, uh, Europe had a fantastic victory against the Americans. But do you ever see a time when the Europeans will take on an international team? I hope not. I hope not. Oh, you mean play an international yeah. team? You and know, as in Allah Yes, Cup. I think. Well, that would be nice. That's a nice dream. But I think let's stick to the Ryder Cup. Yeah. It's so prestigious. It's so exciting. Leave it at that. Let's have the Presidents Cup playing America and maybe maybe what we could have is the President's Cup playing America and the winners play Europe yeah. but remember this there are only so many weeks in a year and there's so many tournaments that players have to play and there's a demand for them to play by sponsors uh, and by people that sponsor them so it's not easy to fit in all these things so I, I think at this stage it's appropriate to have President's Cup and Ryder Cup these are quick fire questions, so give me the first yeah. thing that comes into your head. Who would play you in a movie? Uh, Burt Lancaster. What was the best shot you ever hit? At, Con at Carnoustie, I was one shot ahead of Jack Nicholas and one shot ahead of four other players. And we came to the spectacles and the breeze was blowing and I had a three wood in my hand. And the wind was whipping and the flag was going like that. And I hit a three wood that far from the hole to get a two-shot lead and go on to beat Nicholas head-to-head -head in the British Open. What's the best shot you ever saw? Now that is, uh, uh, to answer that quickly, I'll tell you one of the best shots that I ever saw was the putt that McDowell hold in the recent Ryder Cup. I think he was the man of the match at, at that stage. Do you prefer cats or dogs? Dogs. Beatles or Rolling Stones? Beatles. Nicholas or Palmer? Tie. <laughs> They're my two good friends. You can do many sit-ups, but how many press-ups can you do? I could do easily a hundred press-ups and a thousand sit-ups I do every day, so I could do two thousand sit-ups. In fact, I could do I could do three thousand sit-ups. If you had a time machine, where would you go back to? A time machine? Yeah. Uh, right now. Uh, right now, at 75, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life, so I don't need a time machine. You've got to channel your energies in the right direction and never look ahead and never look back. Enjoy the moment. Seize the moment. And finally, if you can do one big favour for us, can you look down the camera yeah. and say, I'm Gary Player and this is my golf course? My golf lot. My golf course. My golf course. Yeah. Hi, I'm Gary Player and this is my golf course. And one last thing, can you go do the same and say, Hi, I'm Gary Player and you're watching Show Me the Golf TV? Hi, I'm Gary Player. Show me the golf TV. On Show Me the Golf TV. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Gary Player. On Show Me the Golf TV. A good channel. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay.